Let me ask you uh, one thing that a bunch of people are curious about. You're one of the innovators. First of all, you're one of the great innovators and philosophers and thinkers in jujitsu, right? Uh, but you're also one of the innovators in terms of leg locks and, and the 50-50 position. And just like the fact that legs have something to do in jujitsu, uh, the, the, under, the other popularizer innovator in the space is John Donaher and his whole group of guys. Do you have um, thoughts about their whole system of leg locks and the, their ideas about jujitsu and so on? Sure. I, I guess, uh, you know, obviously, you know, John and, and the students at Henzo have been able to do fantastic things competitively in the past number of years. And, you know, um, you, you mentioned innovators in the, in that kind of, you know, section of jujitsu. I, I would be, uh, I'd, I'd love to bring up some guys like Dean Lister, um, yeah. of course, uh, Masakazu Minari. In fact, a lot of what was going on in, in like 90s Japan, like combat submission wrestling, there was some crazy gnarly stuff that it's just, it's on grainy VHS tape, <laughs> but like stuff that if people were doing now, they go, oh my God, that's brand new. Like there's, um, it's, it's been, I think these are things that have been around for a while um, in various places. I first learned the 50-50 position, just like the leg entanglement of it from Brandon Vera, actually at a seminar at Lloyd Irvin's Martial Arts, I think in 2005. He learned it from Dean Lister, uh, who used it to submit Alexandre Kakareko, a really, really tough nogi guy at ADCC on the, in the run that uh, Dean made to the, to the gold medal in the absolute division, which was a great performance at the time, first American to do that. Um, and... Uh, you know, and I actually saw a video. I mean, first a boss Rutten actually broke, I think Guy Mesger's foot with a, a 50, 50 heel hook that he actually grabbed his heel and his, and his toes and went like, <laughs> and in pank races back when they had like the man panties and the high, uh, yeah, high boots yeah. on. Yeah. And, uh, dude, that was gnarly. Boss Rutten is underappreciated as like, as like a, he double oh, grab yeah. like, and just oh yeah. Twist. Like, yeah. you know, his leverage is leverage. It's that's, that's like a toehold that's, you know, that goes the other way. And it's like, it either doesn't work or breaks in half. And, uh, well, he's, he, uh, is uh, people don't often think of boss Rutten as an innovator, but he is in a way like <laughs> he, uh, you know, talk about like Elon Musk and first principles thinking in terms of physics. Mm -hmm. He like, just feels like he just gets the job. He figures out like the simplest way to get the job oh, yeah. done of breaking things and, establishing control and hurting people. Remember that was back in the boss. If you listen to boss root and do any like commentary for any of the, uh, the big MMA shows or any MMA show way back when anytime guys were clinching, like the guy should roll for a knee bar. He was saying that way back when, and yeah. now people are doing it all the time with varying degrees of success. It's, it's funny. It's like, it's also tough to be, uh, I think like a breakaway thinker. I mean, you know, group think is a real thing and, and group inertia. And it's it's neat to see, um, you know, particularly at, at a time when maybe that type of stuff was less accepted, um, you know, someone going, hey, I'm going to I'm gonna run off in this other direction. I think, you know, whoever, you know, the inventor of electricity in my mind is a lot more impressive than whomever, not to say that the person down the line isn't impressive, that comes up with an interesting way to use it. Mm -hmm. um, both are cool, but when you think about, just can you imagine we're sitting here and we're like, yeah, people, I'm going to build an airplane. You're like, what are you talking about? It's crazy. People don't fly. I'm like, no, I'm going to do it. And of course, that's not going to be as good as the airplane down the line, the iterative things that happen later on. But um, just being able to go to dream something into existence that you haven't seen before and then make it happen, like takes an unbelievable like strength of character, almost like a force of will, because you have, you're, you're, you're blazing a trail that hasn't been walked before that's the bj penn factor in you know winning the jiu-jitsu world championship first non-brazilian to do that that was back in 2001 and then rafael lovato later on it's like he's you know both of those guys are so unbelievably impressive in my mind for the same reason you know because they were out there winning at a time when that wasn't a common thing not that it's easy to win now it's just there's not a psychological hurdle that needs to be leapt I remember, you know, when I was early in jiu-jitsu, like Americans weren't winning the world championships at any belt. I mean, BJ, we all knew BJ Penn because BJ Penn did it, but it was really, really uncommon. Now it happens, you know, on a semi-regular basis. Of course, the Brazilians are still strong. Europeans are still strong, but, uh, and Australians are coming on as well. But uh, it's it's definitely kind of an interesting thing. So to come back to, you know, John Danaher and the uh, Henzo team, obviously they're doing fantastic things. John's had some really, really great innovation there. And the, 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 the systematization and the method that they're using is uh is great and it's neat to see that it's getting out there um i would just also what i would encourage people to make sure that they're you know catching up on their history because obviously you know john's a brilliant instructor and has, has done things you know for the sport that 
um, that are fantastic that haven't been done before, but you know, none of us exist in a vacuum and I've learned things from everywhere else. So, you know, John would say the same, I'm sure. And, uh, you know, Dean Lister would say the same. And it, it's just neat when you can kind of trace the history of all of this happening because we've had humanity's had two arms and two legs for some time, at least as long as I've been alive.